Let's take a look at an introduction to a topic called sequences and series. Now you might already be familiar with some types of sequences from GCSE maths, um, but we're going to look at some special types of sequences. And the notation here is here. Before we jump straight into looking at this notation, um, because it can be a little bit tricky to get your head around, let's just look at like a few simple examples first. <clears throat> okay, so if we were going to add together 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, this sigma notation, or well, this series notation, essentially we could write it as the sum. We've got five terms all together, so we'd say from r equals 1 to 5. And the terms themselves, this thing inside is what, what describes what these individual terms look like. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we use the letter R just to stand for the natural numbers. And can you see that this is like a, a way of counting? If R equals 1, we get 1. And R would equal 2, so we get 2. R would equal 3. And this sigma notation means we're adding up the terms from 1 to 5. Okay. The next one, we've got, again, we're just adding up the positive integers and we're going all the way up to n. So we can say, well, that's the sum from 1 to n. And the individual terms, we'll use r to describe what those terms look like. So r could equal 1, r could equal 2, all the way up to equaling n. Okay. The next one, we've got n terms all together. So we'll say the sum from 1 to n. But the individual terms now are 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, all the way up to n squared. So we'll say that's the sum of r squared from 1 to n. One that sometimes people get a little bit caught out by is when you've got a constant. But this should be obvious, like if you just think about it for a second. Like if you've got a constant, say like 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, if you've got n lots of that constant, then we could just say we're going from 1 to n and it's just n lots of the constants like the constant doesn't change so we'll use a, a different letter so it's a safe example right if we had 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 we could say that is the sum of 5 lots of 2 and obviously, when you realise that that's all that this means, when there's a constant in times this sequence, a constant inside this series, then however many terms there are, if there's five lots of this two, we could clearly just write that as two times five, wouldn't we? Which we'll see when we move forward and on some other questions. But if there's a constant inside, just realise that that constant's being counted n times. So we could say that would be equivalent to n times. See which is where this, this formula comes from. And lots of a constant. It's just a constant times by C. Okay, so let's start the first example. Um, and we want to evaluate the following terms, uh, the following series, sorry, the following series, where we've got numbers added together. First thing to realise is if you get something like this, obviously you could brute force it, you could on your calculator go 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, but, but there's a much quicker way of doing this when we know about these formulas. Okay. These rules on the right hand side tell us how to add up the natural numbers. This one tells us how to add up. So if we want to add up loads of square numbers, this formula will quickly evaluate that total for us. And if we want to add up the cube numbers, this formula will do it for us. So these formulas on the right hand side are like a quick way of adding up the integers, the squared numbers, the cube numbers. Okay, so let's evaluate it in terms of the notation, so we're going from 1 to 100, so there's 100 terms all together. And because this is the natural numbers, we'll use the letter R. So that would be the same as 1 half N, N plus 1. And N, in these formulas, N stands for the total amount of terms in the sequence. So if we've got 100 terms all together, we know that would be the same as one half of 100 times by 100 plus 1. Okay, 
And obviously you can use a calculator, so you get 50 times by 101, which should be... I think it's going to be that, but let me just check. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So the next one, look at the next sequence. Now, obviously you can see that there's a link between what we've just worked out and now what we're being asked. It's, it's that the series is being times by two. Um, so you could just obviously times this answer by two. But let's think about it using the notation. Okay, so this would be the sum of the even numbers. So it'd be two lots of r inside, because that's what even numbers look like. And again, it, it finishes at 200, but remember, because th this is the even numbers, that it, there is there's still 100 of them. Okay? So if you've got a multiple inside, you can take that out and say, well, that's two lots of the sum of the integers. And this taking out technique is going to be really useful when we get into some exam style questions. So we can say, well, therefore, it's the sum of two lots of this, uh, two lots of the sum of this, and then two lots of this. And that'll give us 10,100. Okay. For the next one, we're adding up a different type of sequence. So these are not just the uh, integers. If you think about what, what type of numbers are these? So one, four, nine, up to one, six, nine. These are the square numbers, okay? And we need to think about well, how many terms have we got all together? That one is 13 squared. So we could say this would be the sum from 1 to 13. There's 13 terms altogether in, in the sequence. And the terms themselves look like this. So r squared. Remember, r, r is like our way of counting these individual terms. 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, all the way up to 13 squared. So that would equal. A quick way of adding up the squared numbers is this formula. So it would be 1 to 6. n. n plus 1. 2n plus 1. And obviously n, when we're using these formulas, n stands for the total number. So it would be 1 sixth of 13. 13 plus 1. 2 times 13 plus 1. Let's see what we get for that. Okay, so I'm getting 8, 1, 9. And obviously, if you wanted to check, you, you could write down the first 13 squared numbers and add them up. But, you know, you're sort of missing the point of the topic. Like, the whole point of these formulas is they add up the square numbers for us really quickly. They add up the cube numbers for us really, really quickly. Okay. Part D is a little bit more awkward. Let's just think about what's going on here. Like, that doesn't look like a sequence I'm familiar with. Um... They are all even numbers. If we take a factor of two out. Okay, these are the cube numbers, aren't they? Um, one cubed, two cubed, three cubed, all the way up to ten cubed. So what we're doing here is the sum of the first ten. and two lots of the cube numbers and there's ten of those so we can take the two outside sum of the first ten cube numbers so that would be two lots of the cube formula is a quarter n squared n plus one squared n is ten because there's ten terms altogether Let's see what we get. So I'm getting 6,050. 
Okay, next let, let's evaluate while we're in the notation straight away. So we don't, we haven't written the full sequence out. Like you can if you want, you can write down the sequence to see what it looks like. But if it gives us to us like this, we want to just try and use these formulas. So we're trying to find the sum of the first 20 terms. And inside our sequence, the terms look like 2r times by r plus 1. The first thing we need to realise with this is we want to rewrite it before we can use any of the formulas. So we could write that as 2r squared plus 2 times r. And a useful tip with these series questions is because we're just adding them up, like adding up the, the square terms and adding up the integers, we can think about this as two separate series added together. Like as soon as we've got this inside, if there's two separate things, we can split it up into two separate series. So I would say, well, that's the same as two lots of the sum of r squared plus two lots of the sum of r. Now that we've got it in this form, we can use these formulas. So that'd be two lots of one sixth n, n plus one. n plus 1 and 2 lots of 1 half n n plus 1 because we're actually evaluating a sequence a series, sorry, we've got 20 terms altogether so we'll sub in and see what we end up with So I'm getting 6, 1, 60. Okay. Let's try one more. Okay, so now we're trying to find the sum of the first 12 cube numbers plus 1. And essentially, if you want to think about what that sequence would look like, like the cube numbers is 1 plus 8 plus 27. So we're working out 2 plus 9 plus 28. Like that's what our sequence would look like. But we don't really need to worry about that as long as we know how to use these rules. Okay. So remember what I was saying in the last one, when there's two separate sequences, you can think about it as the sum of r cubed plus the sum of 1. Just be careful with that bit there. Okay, well sometimes what people do when they see a question like this is they do the sum of r cubed, which is a quarter, n squared, n plus 1 squared, and then they just add 1. Like, that's not right. Okay. Think about it. There's 12 lots of this 1. Like this 1 is being counted 12 times. So if you've got a constant, you do the constant times by n. So that would be 1 times 12. Like each of these terms have had, they've got one added onto them, so there'd be like an extra 12 in our total, wouldn't it? Okay, so now all we've got to do is sub in some of the first 12 cube numbers and see what we get. I think we end up with 6096. Oh, Okay.